I, I quit smoking seven years ago. I yeah. quit drinking 13 years ago. Wow. Um, I haven't done hard drugs and God knows how long. Um, I have a, you know, I have, I have, uh, coffee and you know, the, the cool stuff that I get to do with my wife, let's put it that way. That's all I got. <laughs> and, um, it's I'm okay with that, man. You know, because everything else, everything else is just, this just, just, just takes away from it. You know, yeah. I would, I'm, I'm happier than I've ever been. So that combined with all of the physical and the fact that, you know, my passion is still there for the music that kind of combines to make sure it ensures that I can get out there and stay out there. And yes, I mean, there are nights where I get on stage and I'm just like, I, how the hell am I going to pull this off? And then it, it turns into one of the best shows I've ever had. And then I get off stage and I sleep for 12 hours because I just, I just get the pillow and I'm gone, you know, but that's good, man. It's as long as you know, your limitations, you can go up to it and then you come back. It's like the tide, you know, the tide's going to come just to the point and then it's going to pull back. And as long as you know where that tide can crest, you know where you can push it. Battle Line Podcast, we are incredibly excited to have Corey Taylor on the podcast. And uh, and actually, if you're watching visually, if you're not on YouTube, go to the YouTube, youtube.com slash at Battle Line Podcast. And visually, man, your background looks awesome. Yeah, now. And, and, you, and, and I've uh, stepped up a little bit as well. And we're both, we both looked a little, we both look a little jacked today. We're both wearing our <laughs> medium shirts. So Battle Line Podcast. Yeah, and I got my, actually, this is my anchor and this is a ranger <laughs> buddy who owns a bar. I used to work in my Iraq. He owns a bar in the Northwest. So if you're ever in Washington and you want a friendly bar that doesn't have a lot of wokeness in it, sorry, if you say, maybe you guys like that. I don't know, but that you're not going to find it here. You're going to find just a bunch of, bunch of army veterans and law enforcement and first responders in there. Just a good old fashioned Northwest bar anchor in, but that's the kind of shirt I'm wearing and it's a medium. So it makes me look bigger than I really am. Well, uh, I was just going to say, man, for you guys tuning in, we're going to get into fatherhood times with slipknot also the military connection. You are not going to want to miss this, but the way that we keep these shows going really for, what 189 episodes in at this point is our sponsors that's who keeps us going who keeps the show free so please support them hero soap company they've been with us a long time we haven't uh done anything with them in a long time but i still use their stuff constantly because you will never go back to regular soap after you've used hero soap company it's just the best the scents are great no chemicals dyes or fragrances no parabens that are found in common soaps that link to breast cancer and reproductive complications in men. Their bar scents are amazing. The yeah. woods, cedar wood, tea tree, lavender, cool, old west, pure aloe. And you can try a bunch of them with the Freedom Bundle. They have body wash, the fields, lemongrass, the grove, and lime. I currently have a lemongrass in my shower. Love it. Uh, they're focused on helping veteran charities, including 14th Hour Foundation. Yeah. And their slogan is let freedom clean. So check them out. HeroSoapCompany.com. We've had a different promo code with them before, but for this, they're using the promo code battle because they're kind of tracking how this episode does. So go to HeroSoapCompany.com. Use the promo code battle for 10% off. You're going to get the best soap out there. And the best collagen out there is, of course, through Bubs Naturals. When you go to BubsNaturals.com and use the promo code battle line for 20% off. Uh, not only that, their MCT oil powder, their apple cider vinegar gummies, it is really just the best supplements on the market. And they also give back to veterans. And that's really a theme of this show is giving back to veterans through the Glenn Doherty Memorial Foundation. So check them out. Learn more about them through their site, bubsnaturals.com, and use the promo code BATTLELINE and you'll get 20% off. All right. With that, let's get right into this. Corey Taylor. From Slipknot, Stone Sour, also his own solo stuff. Let's hit it. From Kansas City to New York City, from planet Earth to extraterrestrial life in space, a podcast with no equal, engaged in unconventional warfare through your speakers and headphones. 
This is a show about embracing the suck, conquering your demons, and finding God in the face of adversity. Chris Tonto Peranto. Switch is on. Mother I'm going to shoot you in the face. Ian Scotto. You know, Ian and I have been dating for a long time. You are now tuned into the Battle Line Podcast. The switch is on Battle Line podcast, and truly, it is an yeah. honor to have Corey Taylor on from Fuck Slipknot, yeah. <laughs> also yeah. soul artist. I know you know Chris is a big fan of your work, also with Stone okay, Sour. Well, I, he always forgets to put Stone Sour in there. I don't know why, man. I'm like, gee, come on, man. Well, I know, I know that Stone Sour is not not currently active, but, well, I mean, but that, so many of still, our listeners love their stuff. That's still and, with the veterans. That's what we, man. That's what we're. When I was in Iraq, Afghanistan, rocking before we're going out. You listen to Slipknot before you hit it out the gate. And then when you're coming down, you're bringing it down a notch. You listen to Stone Sour as you're coming in, man. I, I, said, I mean, it's like, it's like perfect. It's like, holy shit. That's a Slipknot, I mean, guy. That's a Slipknot I, guy singing? He can't, holy I can't shit. That's a- anything to that. I mean, that's a great endorsement if I've ever heard one, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. And, and I should throw out there, I mean, part of the reason we're having you on when we talk about the veteran, um, yeah. The, the the veteran tie into things is also you starting the Taylor Foundation with the mission of helping all veterans and first responders cool. suffering from post post traumatic stress to find connection and healing right. through local partnerships. Uh, I mean, we're both fans, so we're truly, as I said, honored to have you on. And the first thing I have to say, man, when I look at your schedule, you are truly like after all these years, one of the hardest working men in terms of like. Slipknot is going to be touring Europe. Then you're doing your solo tour, releasing the solo album. And on top of that, this new Veterans Foundation. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lot. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know if I just have an issue or, or I just love, you know, making myself have to like freak out and go, oh God, I got a million things I got to do today. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I just, when, when I come up with something that I get really passionate about, I just know that I want to run with it, you know? So if it, you know, whether it's going over and and playing a bunch of festivals with Slipknot or, you know, really kind of starting to get my solo career off the ground, or obviously talking to you guys about, you know, something that I'm very passionate about with the Taylor foundation. I mean, I just got so many dogs in the fire at all times that you know even my wife goes when do you sleep and i just go i just try to get something in between you know like i'm just trying to make sure that you know i've got enough energy to handle all comers you know and i i I don't even know if i have enough to do that but uh i'm getting away with it i tell you what i'm certainly getting away with it well and you've been doing it for years i mean i yeah just me uh and, and my, and I do, I, I have, I, I do have an intimate experience with Slipknot just because of where I was at at the time. And, and when I really started to pick you guys up in 2004, I mean, I'm from Omaha, so I knew you, who you guys were. Oh, absolutely. IWAB, yeah. Yeah. Council Bluffs, you guys would come and play at the Mid-America Center or you'd go and there was that field way outside of town by the Iowa School of the Deaf that you guys would, it was, it was when you guys were coming up, you'd play with 311 every once, I think it was 311 that come in because they were an Omaha local band. Right. But I tell you what, when I was in Iraq and I, I got in, but I remember, I even remember the day I was started and I hit that subliminal verses and I started listening to that album and it was in the morning and I had been five months in Iraq and my head was, I mean, I was all over the place. And I was going for a jog around the green zone there in Baghdad and, and it came on and it's just, I still remember it, it, it amped me up. It, not that it got me ready to go out there, but it was like, man, it, holy, this, this is speaking to me. And I think that goes with a lot of veterans. And what I'm leading into is I didn't, buddy, I didn't even know you had a, had the foundation to help veterans. And I, when I read that, and I think there's a lot of veterans that do, so I, that's, we want to get that exposure, but there is that intimate tie in that a lot of us have with your music and with Slipknot's music and Stone Sour's music, because there were days like I had there in Iraq. I remember it was cloudy. It was a hellish day the day before the night was long. And I remember going for a jog around this two mile loop and starting to listen to Slipknot's verses and just coming out of my funk. 
and right. and, and that's that's something that I, 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 all of us that have served or can attest to with your music, whether it's you or us or Stone Sour or Slip or Slipknot or your solo stuff. So, is that why you started the foundation? I mean, did you see that? And did you see? And I read the bio on your website, and it sounded like it. But I just want to hear it from. And I'm not calling you a horse, brother. You're not. You're the man. Uh, right. But I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Why? Why did you start it? And and do you feel that way? And do you know that you have that connection with hundreds of thousands of us out there that have served in the global war on terror? Right, right. I mean, honestly, it's it, it was certainly a determining one of the de determining factors. You know, um, we you know we've we've been privileged enough to have been doing this for a long time, and doing so, I've gotten to meet so many of our fans, and so many of our fans, like you said, are ex-military or current, current yeah. uh, law enforcement, uh, emergency services. I've met so many of them who give so much and they tell me from the heart that our music helps them get through it, man. And it has helped them on the other side in so many different ways. That was definitely something that led me to the decision. Obviously, obviously, you know, in the bio that, you know, I talk about my grandfather who served in the Korean war, um, you know, and I, I have a lot of military in my family, you know, uh, my cousin, uh, was was a Marine, was sto stationed in Okinawa for many years. Um, I, you know, so I have, you know, I've got, I've got skin in the game, put it that way, you know, and uh, I, you know, over the years, between the memories of that, and, you know, trying to, uh, you know, reconnect with the memories of my grandfather, and I don't have a lot because of what happened to him, you know, that was certainly the the kind of the catalyst for for doing what i did and for those listening who obviously don't know my grandfather came back from the korean war with debilitating alcoholism because of his ptsd which they didn't call it that at the time yeah. it was it was battle fatigue battle and the, fatigue and shell shock is what they right. would call it yep so that was it was just something that they didn't go any really go any further than diagnosing it than just kind of basically releasing you I mean, because they didn't just didn't have the skills at the time to do it or to deal with it so um he came back my, uh they were divorced you know my grandmother and my grandfather were divorced way before i was born so he was this figure in my life that i didn't really know he was just this person that i would visit i maybe visited three times when i was young and he was this man who lived in a basement who apparently i was related to or he was homeless, you know, like, I don't have any really warm or meaningful memory from, from my grandfather, you know, but and one of the last memories I have is when he was dying, you know, he was in the VA hospital. And, you know, he had been sober for the last few years of his life, which was good. And he was remarried, he was happy. And yet the cirrhosis had got him, you know, and it, he was shell you know and it and it hurt but but it hurt in a different way you know like and i didn't even really process the fact that i didn't have a relationship with my grandfather until years later you know where you know i had dealt with my own trauma through music i was dealing with my own addictions um and dealing with the fact that you know for you know a good chunk of time it had pulled me away from my family because of the things that i wasn't dealing with so, you know, once I kind of started down that road and started kind of putting pieces together in my own head, I realized that this was something that I could help with because I had met so many people on my road, you know, from military, like, obviously, like I said, you know, law enforcement, emergency services and their families. And that's something that people don't always talk about is the families as well, you know, yeah. being part of that, yeah. that process. I realized what I could do was not only raise awareness for those people, but also help local groups that really don't get the spotlight. Cause a lot of people talk about the national organization, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but, but what gets washed out in that message is the fact that there are so many grassroots, like homegrown, uh, groups and organizations that are trying to help veterans and, and the like, um, 
deal with this, you know? So that became my goal was to honor my, my grandfather and my grandmother by trying to amplify those local places and try to maybe tie them together in a network, uh, you know, through my Taylor foundation and, and maybe get, you know, get them talking to each other, you know, you know, getting their visibility to a point where maybe people in their, their own town who didn't know that they were there yeah. would see it. And it's just been a snowball effect. You know, it, it's one of the, it, it's one of the things that I'm, I'm really, I'm, well, obviously I'm, I'm really grateful for the people who I've, I'm able to work with and the response has been fantastic, you know, and, and we're just getting started. Yeah. That, that's wow. I, I, I didn't know your grand, I mean, I read in the bio, but I didn't know your grandfather was that relationship that, that hits, honestly, that hits me hard on a personal level, just cause I, I, I know what you're feeling. I don't know what, probably what he was feeling at times too. And I got through it because of my family. Like you said, family is important. Uh, reconciled my wife, got back with my wife, got my shit together. And a lot of veterans, that's what we do. We either go down that dip road and with those demons get us, or we get on our right. knees and say, okay, hey, I, I need to unfuck myself. And right. we get with the family that does that. So having that support network that you're doing and giving them out there where there's things like they can find support is, is monumental, brother. Like I said, just, just when you hear Slipknot and you hear your songs, it does. It takes us back. It doesn't matter how hard the song hits, how whether your whether your your melodic voice is going or you're screaming in the microphone, it always right. brings us. This is what happens. This is the smile comes back. And so, right. uh, you, you brother, you have a lot of a lot of power out there to help a lot of us veterans and first responders out there. So I'm glad you're doing it. I, I, we always the news always hits on awful stories, terrible stories out there. We don't want to get in that. We hate that. I hate that. Actually, I don't watch the news at all. I'm not on it anymore. Um, I want a success story. Do you have any personally from the foundation that you or is it too early to tell? Have you just uh, well, you, I mean, it's a little early. Um, I, I can tell you that the response has been fantastic, you know, and I've I've met I've met so many great uh, different uh, groups uh, that that I've had the privilege of being able to actually go and and hang out with a lot of them. And they've shared with me like a lot of the stories that they have. I don't have the names in front of me, but I mean, I'm talking about in Colorado, in uh, uh, Michigan, um, in New York State. I mean just so many different uh organizations that are are really they they feel the same way that i do um they are dedicated to it and they just appreciate the fact that somebody's listening you know like it's to me that i think that's half the battle is knowing that somebody's listening you know because yeah. for so long people you know the the people who were supposed to be helping them weren't, you know, or didn't, didn't really understand. They didn't have tools to understand it or identify it or know how to help them. So I think the fact that that dialogue is, is continuing and that conversation is there's no stigma on that yeah. conversation as much anymore. And we're being able to kind of lift that. That's what I think is, is so important, man. So I, I know that uh, a lot of people have responded to to the to the foundation very positively. So I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping to be able to kind of you know kind of keep a keep a dog in this fight for as long as possible. Yeah, and you, you know when I when I think of Slipknot, you were talking about your own trauma and how you can relate to veterans with that. I mean, I think of guys like Chris here who've lost you know men in combat, and Slipknot started out with these nine guys from Iowa. And two of them are no longer with us. And right. I would imagine just the trauma that you have to deal with that and then go back on the road with this band and continue to make albums like after 25 years, it's probably something you can relate to because you're as close to someone who served in combat when you're on a bus touring for mo month after month, year after year. Slipknot right. is a band that never really ceased. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was... Oh man, how do you even put it? I mean, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, that first year and a half that we were on the road was such a, almost a, just a, a straight line, man. Like we ducked our head and just went for it. Honestly, because we didn't know 
in our heads, we didn't know if, if we would get another opportunity. We had no idea just how, how much of an impact we'd really had until we kind of came up for air after about <laughs> six months, we were just like, we're like, wait a minute, the, we, we've sold how many albums? I mean, it was <laughs> literally like that because nobody was more, nobody was more surprised by our success than we were. We were just like, cause I mean, we had set our, our sights very low, you know, I mean, you know, come from Iowa. We never wanted to be too ostentatious. We didn't want to reach for more than we thought we deserved. We had big dreams, but that was it, man. You know, like we knew what we wanted to do and we just thought, you know what, we'll put it out there and we'll see what happens, you know, and lo and behold, man, something really resonated with, with a lot of people, you know, and, we we were we were very grateful for that and yeah we did we stayed out god knows how i i i think the most we ever had between tours off was like a week so i mean we would go out for three months at a time come home for like three days like you know kind of look at our stuff and go okay i live here and then we go right back out <laughs> that great. So, but it taught us so much uh, about ourselves it taught us so much about the fact that you know not a lot of people would have put themselves through that if they didn't believe in what they were doing and and didn't relish the fact that you're never going to be back here so you better take advantage of now right now and and we just yeah man i mean we threw out all stakes we we cut the rudder dry we just went for it you know and yeah, and when you were saying that you never had your hopes to be that high, when I think of Slipknot's career, the only uh, the only way I could put it is it was like a glitch in the matrix. A at that time, that all hope is gone was came out. I was working at Tower Records at the time when people were still buying CDs, which I right. still do. But I still do buy CDs, by the way. I'm so do I. all the streaming bullshit. Yeah, I love having physical <laughs> copy. But when I saw all all hope is gone, number one on Billboard, like. This is music for people who have experienced extreme amounts of trauma, people who are outcasts. Like Slipknot is not Donna Summer or Mariah Carey. There's no yeah. reason your music should appeal to such a broad audience. And somehow, after two and a half decades, it still is at that level. And you guys are still playing stadiums while your peers are mainly playing clubs. It's it's yeah. really wild uh -huh. to see. Yeah, it's I, I I'm it, it's like you kind of said. You know, I mean we we were a moment uh, and, and I think I, I, I've, I've thought about this over the years. I have theories about it. The, the one thing that I keep coming back to is I, I think people could tell just how, how legitimate we were. Like there was no bullshit to this band, you know, even with all of the quote unquote theatricality, of the band there was something very genuine about it you know the passion that we all had the ferocity yeah. with which we played uh, um the unabashed glee we took and just kind of kicking the shit out of each other it was <laughs> it was we were a moment in time and i think it's because our objective for putting slipknot together was very to me was very righteous. We put that band together because there was nobody playing the music that we wanted to hear. Nobody was writing that way. There were hints of it all yeah. over the landscape. You know, like one band would have a little bit of it, but another band would have a little bit, of it. but nobody was doing it the way we wanted to hear it, which was just unabashedly selfish you know Gil, i want to play all of it you know and we just we just kind of looked at ourselves and was like okay fine we'll do it ourselves and because we did that it came from this very honest place you know because you no know, nothing is going to be nothing's going to feel more honest than something that you want to hear something that you want to say something that you want to feel and because of that we never pandered. We never pandered to anybody. We were like, this is what we sound like. If you don't like it, that's fine. I'm not going to force this on you. It's all good. But if you like this, 
you know where we are and you know there's more to come and that set the tone you know so many other artists pander they yeah. they write specifically for them or they they write things that they hope people will like and it's like we didn't give a shit about any of that we were like you're either in or you're out is that you know? that's a, that's a midwestern but I'm midwest i still live in kansas but that's a midwestern mentality and especially at that time in the nine, 90s and 2000s it well, no, nobody cared about the flower states so who gives a shit about it? we're gonna do what we like that's it nothing pissed me off more than that there was a there was an old billboard um and i can't remember what company was and i did love to because i'd love to piss in their ass <laughs> <laughs> old billboard that said nobody famous ever came from des moines iowa oh, wow. and I always wanted to kind of take a picture of me in front of that, just flipping it off like this, because it's like, on one hand, true to a point, but you're forgetting that Aston Kutcher came from Iowa, you know, and he's well more well known. <laughs> I am. I, I said, no, I take your, no, come on. Come but, on I kicked but, him in his mouth. <laughs> can't necessarily say that because Slipknot came from Des Moines, Iowa, proudly came from Des Moines, Iowa, you know? Um, and even though I, you know, I don't have a house there anymore, it's still the place that when I go home, I, it feels like home, you know? Well, I had, yeah. It, and and it hasn't changed sorry, what were you much. saying, Chris? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just, I, it just hasn't changed much. I'm still small town America. I, I don't want to be in the cities. I have, I lived in Northern Virginia and DC when I was with the agency where Right. And I know I, I moved back to a teeny town because that's what I enjoy and I love and I don't have to continue to go on a schedule like holy shit dude that's just I, I, I did that for three years not even to the extent you did but just being gone all the time yeah and even on the deployments and that wears you out man and I, I do want to get to that a little bit and how you got through it because I don't help some veterans as well but Ian go ahead I'll ask it after your you're done. I cut you off. No, no. The, the only thing I was going to say is the same thing you're saying about that billboard. It's funny because I was showing you CDs and I have like a Kiss CD over here. And I remember like that all that cutout that Paul Stanley is posted from a newspaper that said like, I hope these guys in Kiss have some type of skill because they better be working on their day job because this is going to go absolutely nowhere. And he kept that. And I think like that motivates so many bands to say fuck you we're gonna do what we want we're gonna do it the way we want to do it and yeah i've seen it so much with your band i mean i just think about as you were saying before there there's like a plethora of songwriters out there who write hits for these bands and like a lot of them have come and gone in five years, 10 years, and you're still doing it. But anyway, what, what were you saying, Chris? Because I you, you were asking there about well, the small town. Well, I think is is your, your schedule, and I saw that after this many years, and we talked, we alluded to in the beginning, and maybe you don't have an answer for it, or maybe and but if you do, I'd love to hear it. How do you how do you keep that energy level? How do you continue where you just like I I because I, I just want to be home. So Ian, I'll tell you, I just want to be home. I don't, I'm done. I just want to be home. I want to sleep in. I don't want to worry about shit. Right. And you're still out there doing it. How and you have and your wife. I mean, you your wife still how does she and how is she dealing with because my wife would no, my wife would be gone. I'd be out. She'd be like, Yeah, bye. But See luck, <laughs> my wife tours too. So she gets yeah. the and, and, and she uh, she opened for you guys on your last tour, right? So We've, we've been able it's it's been great man we've been able to do a handful of tours together and That's it's awesome. better than than doing something that you love with somebody that you love you know like and you know and it it, it reinforces the the love that you have for each other because you know it's one of the things that you fell in love with them for it's to me it's it's well, here, let me back up because there are several answers to this. <laughs> um, why do I do it this crazy after all these years? Um, I mean, because I'm a glutton, you know, because I love to do it, you know. Love, yeah. To me, it's always been about balance in a lot of ways and, and balancing work with, with family sometimes has been tough. Um, and sometimes has been uh, successful, you know. Um, you know, it, it's funny because I used to 
stress and just really beat myself up that you know I wasn't at home. You know, um, I would I would miss huge chunks of the time. And I've had to kind of I've, I've had to kind of rein that in because what I what I've forgot is that because of what I do, it pays for the stability of my life. You know, like my children don't have to worry about anything, you know, except what I teach them to worry about. You know, they don't have to worry about where they're going to sleep, when they're going to eat, you know, what their future can be if they, you know, it, whatever, you know, their college is taken care of. If they want it, they, you know, I can help them with job opportunities if need be, you know, I mean, my son, I didn't have to help him with anything, but he's out on the road with his band and they're killing it, you know? And in a way that's brought he and I, even closer man because like now he really really gets it and we talk now more than we ever have which to me it's beautiful you know so uh, you know i mean there's there's so many different reasons why i still do it and and all it comes down to the fact that i i still want to and that that's huge I, yeah if i didn't want to like i wouldn't be around let's put it that way if if i ever get to the point where i feel like I'm only doing it um, to kind of cover bills and whatnot, then I've already promised myself that I would walk away, you know? And I've, and I've, there have been a handful of times where I've made myself take a break because it starts to feel like that. It's like, I gotta, I gotta refine it, you know? Like I have to, I have to kind of let that, those reasons come back to me before I go back out there and do anything. And, uh, you know, I, a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So I'm very lucky that I have that, that I can be able to kind of put the brakes on and, and let the passion kind of come back to me, you know? So it's, it's still, it's still something that I, I long for. And it's something I hope that I'm still good at, you know? Uh, yeah, Absolutely. You're, you're, still, you're still good at it. <laughs> hey, the, uh, I, go, go ahead, Ian. Go ahead. I know Ian and oh, I jump okay. on each other all the, to all the yeah, time. Yeah, it, it so, happens. Of course. This is why I wish we could do things in studio because it does make things easier. But I, what I was going to say is it was interesting to hear you mention balance because I would think just being the, slip, the front man of Slipknot probably creates no balance in your life. The fact that night after night you have to go on stage and play this music that is pure brutality it's a very physical performance. The songs that you're actually putting out there, you're reliving different traumas of what you've written about. I would just think that there's no balance to that because when I think of as a fan, Chris or myself, Chris out on a deployment or me just out at the gym, I could put on Slipknot in my headphones and get fucking pumped to it. But if I, you know, if the weather's nice and I want to listen to the Beach Boys for a week and not listen to any hard stuff, I can right. do that. But I would think there's got to be nights where you're like, I don't want to get up there and do this. And I would think it creates a lack of balance. Well, it's, it's time. I mean, it's definitely exhausting. Um, but as I've gotten older, you know, obviously certain vices have gone away, which, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, it's, I'm probably health wise. I'm probably the best that I've been in years, you know, like, um, you look I, great, man. I will say yeah, you look yeah. very young. So yeah, yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be 50 this year. So Damn. it's, you know, I've had to really kind of dial it back. I've had to, you know, kind of reassess um, what I want in life. You know, there are, there are times when you have to balance excess with success, to be honest, you know? Um, and I realized a long ago that, if I want to continue to do this into my, you know, sixties and whatnot, and which is what I want to do, I have to make sure health wise that I can do it. Like I have to, so I, I, you know, I, I still exercise. I've, I've cleaned my diet up as best I can. Um, <laughs> I, uh, there's still moments where I eat like a 12 year old and I feel like shit later. So I'm like, Oh, yeah. Christ. <laughs> but I'm a dude as well. Yeah. So like, I want to eat entire box of Popeye's fried chicken motherfucker I'm yeah, gonna I, I eat two packs of M&M's peanut butter and M's every every day at least at, two packs of, of peanut butter there's only a handful of things that make me believe in God and peanut butter m, &M. <laughs> so, full attention but um 
I, I quit smoking seven years ago. I quit drinking 13 years ago. Wow. Um, I haven't done hard drugs and God knows how long. Um, I have a, you know, I have, I have, uh, coffee and you know, the, the cool stuff that I get to do with my wife, let's put it that way. That's all I got. <laughs> and, um, it's I'm okay with that, man. You know, because everything else, everything else is just, this is just takes away from it. You know, yeah. I would, I'm, I'm happier than I've ever been. So that combined with all of the physical and the fact that, you know, my passion is still there for the music that kind of combines to make sure it ensures that I can get out there and stay out there. And yes, I mean, there are nights where I get on stage and I'm just like, I, how the hell am I going to pull this off? And then it, it turns into one of the best shows I've ever had. And then I get off stage and I sleep for 12 hours because I just, I just get the pillow and I'm gone, you know, but that's good, man. It's as long as you know, your limitations, you can go up to it and then you come back. It's like the tide. You know the tide's going to come just to the point and then it's going to pull back. And as long as you know where that tide can crest, you know where you can push it. That's cool. Well said. Yeah, that's well said. I can, I'm going to steal a lot of that. When I, I do a lot of public speaking, I'm stealing that shit. I'll, I'll, right. give, I'll give you credit for it, man. But uh, yeah. uh, hey, the. Uh, Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this episode with Corey Taylor. We do talk about the military connection, as you hear with Slipknot. And uh, with that, if you guys are military or you just love to shoot, you're going to want the best ammo out there, and that's Sports Scout Munitions. And that, and, Corey, and I should say that uh, Tonto is out there in uh, Kansas in the studio, and you can yeah. see the Sports Scout stuff. Right here. Say something. Right, 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 sorry. Right here. I forget. I forget with Zoom, we still got to talk. So the camera pans. You should know this by now for doing this for how many years. But yeah, yeah, I got the FSM training shirts. You got all the little ammo up here, the little tins over here. You, you see. Yeah. Just, and, just, and, and I'll throw okay. out there, uh, Harold, if you can show this. This is the Fort Scott Munitions tins, which you can get on the site. Uh, you guys know by now, though, tumble upon impact in soft tissue, leaving devastating wound channels for faster bleed out and quicker incapacitation. This ammunition was originally developed to innovate and improve on the standard of military grade ammunition design. It was found that not only did the TUI ammunition outperform competitors in the self-defense industry, but it quickly became apparent that it would be a top contender for hunters alike. With the ammunition being CNC spun, the tolerances are some of the tightest on the market, ensuring that you receive the same results with each pull of the trigger. Fort Scott Munitions is available throughout all 50 states, but you can go to their website, fsm.com, type in the promo code BATTLELINE, and you'll get 15% off your order. Only available to listeners of the Battle Line podcast. Once again, go to fsm.com, type in the promo code Battle Line. Also, the best night vision out there is through Photonis Defense. Now you can have the superpower to see in the dark with the Viper Binocular Night Vision System by Photonis Defense, which is the global leader in night vision solutions, providing more high quality night vision capabilities than anyone. Military, law enforcement, and public safety end users utilize Photonis Defense Solutions to give them the edge at night in tactical situations and rescue operations. Hunters, shooters, boaters, and enthusiasts can rely on the Photonis Defense Viper Binocular to help them become masters of darkness. The new Viper Binocular system carries the same features and benefits as the Photonis Defense Viper Monocular with a ruggedized body and harnesses the power of the echo intensifier tubes, giving you sharper images, reduced halo, and industry-leading industry ultra-fast auto-gating across the range of dynamic operating conditions. So if you're looking for the best night vision on the market, go no further, look no further than PhotonisDefense.com for more information or... Look for Photonis Defense product options from your night vision dealer. Once again, that's P-H-O-T-O-N-I-S defense.com. Now back to our interview with the one and only Corey Taylor. When you were talking about your son, and this is something personally that I've had with myself and also a lot of veterans have, especially when we did a lot of deployments over many, many years, and we right. weren't home. We missed the birthdays and the Halloweens. And I had to repair my relationship with my 16, when he was 16 is when we finally came because I was never home and right. we did repair it. Uh, did you, but did you ever have that because you, at the time when he was growing up and you were probably gone, I mean, even more so, um, did you have to repair that relationship 
And now that you like I said, I'm happy as hell for you that you guys are the closest you've ever been. Me and my boy are the closest we've ever been now. He's 18 now. But we did have a coming to Jesus moment where he's like, Dad, you were never here. You were a right. terrible. I mean, it was more, he didn't say it in so many words, but it was, Dad, you were a terrible father. You were gone. Basically, I'm putting the job before him. Did right. you have that? And if you did, were you able to talk? How did you talk through it? Maybe I, maybe that will help if other veterans are going through issues or anybody's going to issues with family and sons and daughters and so forth right. because job has come first. Right. I mean, it was definitely, I mean, there were definitely a couple of years where it was difficult, you know? Um, and, you know, part of that can just be human nature. Part of that can be the fact that, you know, I was gone for you know, giant chunks of his, of his time. It also didn't help that the relationship I was in before my marriage now was very toxic. It was very hard on him. And in a lot of ways, he, you know, he blamed me, you know, which he has every right to because, you know, at the time I, I didn't realize how bad it was. So there was definitely a moment where he and I mean, he and I have always been tight. He's my boy. And he we've we've always had a very, very special bond. You know, um, when his mother and I split up, I mean, he he was I was all he had for a long time, you know. So when I was on the road, I would have to, you know, have a caretaker, you know, take care of him. So he could go to school and then I would come home and we would just kind of pick up from there. But you, you never got that rhythm. Yeah. Never yeah. rhythm, you know? So I was constantly having to relearn who he was, you know, cause every time I'd come back, he was different. And every time he, I would come back, he, you know, everything that I knew, I would, I would almost always have to kind of throw out, you know, th throw in the, <laughs> it was, you know, it was different. So, um, it was once he got older, there was definitely a push back and forth um, because he was starting to kind of come into his own. And between the anger that he had for, you know, missing so much and the anger of the, the previous issues and the anxiety that kind of had, you know, sprung up in his life because of my Midwestern way of being a father, which is you raise your voice and it doesn't matter why I want you to, you know, just all of that, all of that shit. It was tough, you know, so we butted heads for a, a few years, man. And, uh, and then one, one year, you know, it, it just, everything just kind of clicked, man. And we both looked at each other in a very different way. And we were able to, to really kind of reconcile, not that it was ever really bad, but just, it was, it was, it was weird enough that I really felt like, I was like, man, I'm going to lose him. You know, like, you, you continue that communication, even during those bad times. And that, yeah. that sounds like that was the most important thing. I, I know with me, that's what it was. Right. Yeah. No, 100%, man. I mean, you never give up. You, you know, like you never, you know, you have to, it, it takes being brutally honest with yourself going, I made mistakes. Yeah. You know, you'd love to think that you were the perfect father. You'd love to think that you were, you know, just doing it for their own good. And sometimes guess what? It's not those universal ways of parenting didn't always work, you know? And for me, realizing that, you know, maybe I had contributed to, you know, some of his anxiety hurt you know so i had to relearn how to be a parent man i had to relearn how to talk to my kid i had to relearn how to my son and then realize that you know he's not a baby anymore man like he's you know he's gonna be 21 this year and i you know it, it's been it's actually been easier for me to talk to him as an adult than it was when he was younger you know because i had no skill set um as, as a father like that, you know, so it's been tough. Um, but I tell you what, the lessons that I've learned, not only have I been able to apply to my youngest, my youngest daughter, I've also applied it to people in my life, you know, and how I communicate with other people, you know, you can't just explode. You have to, you have to create a conversation. You have to create a dialogue because it's the only way people are going to be able to a understand you and b not resent or fear you and 
those two things are the death knell for any relationship. Sure. Uh, it's well said, man. Again, beautiful stuff. Dude. You're, you you sound like a great father. I, I, I you really do. I, I, for those out there listening, fathers and son relationships, that is something you should take note of. And I didn't figure that out for, you know, till he was 16, 17 and, and now I have, you know, and, and now he is 18 and he's bigger than me. So he can probably, he, I hope he's not watching because he can probably whoop my ass now. So I definitely oh, have to. <laughs> oh, Christ. He's going to push me over. And then, and then I, the, he'll walk away and there'll be nobody to help me get up. So I'll be <laughs> but you know what I wanted to ask you about when we were, you know, going back to the early years of Slipknot, uh, it must've been a big choice to decide to take off the mask when you started your stuff with Stone Sour. And even to this day, like the crazy thing with your band is I'm a fan. And if I ran into any of the other members on the street, I probably wouldn't know who they are. Like you are the only person who is really like visually famous at this point from your other projects early on when you were able to go out there anonymously, like compare that to now, do you ever wish you could go back to that and have maybe the money and all that great stuff and not have the fame and not be stopped everywhere you go? No, it's, I mean, you'd be surprised, man. I mean, it's only, it's only every once in a while that it feels like it's uh you know like it's a, it's a lot you know it's only every, like every once in a while there'll be instances where people kind of like it gets weird but i have to be in a place where people know to look for me to be honest you know if, if I, I you'd be surprised i can move about this city i live in vegas yeah. i can move about this city and 99 out of a hundred times no one knows me no one cares it's <laughs> awesome i can go i can go shopping i can take my kids to a movie now every once in a while you know it you, somebody will will recognize me you know and i'm and i try to be as accommodating as possible always if i'm with my family though i always tell them as like you know what catch me next time i'm not it this this isn't the time to do it. I'm by myself though, yeah. all the time, you know? Um, but it's not that much different than when we first started out. More people recognize me than you think, be largely because of my damn tattoos. And it's, that's one of the things where I'm like, God, I wish I hadn't gotten those. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I remember, I, if I could just say, I remember that first year of the band, you guys went so over the top to conceal your identity. And like some of the members completely could because of how big the masks were and stuff. But then there were the members like Joey Jordson. I remember like, you know, and he would have put the, the backstage pass in front of his face or something, but you always were going to recognize that hair. Like everyone's yeah. going to recognize that. But yeah, it's it's got to be kind of different to to be a band where your identities are concealed. But yeah, you are right. The tattoos kind of give it away. Right. Yeah. And I, and honestly, you know, it wasn't that hard for us to kind of walk away from that um, after a while because largely, I mean, the masks were never really truly about hiding our identities. It was more about us right. becoming more a part of the music that we were playing. You know, it was always much more of a creative reason behind those masks it was us being able to touch that person inside us who were who needed that music you know because sometimes when you do it it can kind of get lost in the the structure of just being a human you know like you there are there are um inhibitions that that will rein you in there are you know points where you go maybe i shouldn't go that far but then you put that mask on and it all fades away. And now it's just all about getting to the absolute middle, the absolute peak of that chaos, the eye of the storm, being in it and wanting to jump into it, you know, for me anyway. And I can't speak for everybody in the band, but for me, that was the greatest con contributing factor to me wanting to pull that mask on night in or night out. It was making sure that I could like I could really tie in to that folk that focus you talked about being able to to kind of sing those songs that deal with that much trauma the mask helped the mask allowed you to almost step back from it and now 
now it's not the anchor. Now it's the sale. Now yeah. you can take it and you can share it with people in a way that doesn't feel like you're spreading a certain like toxicity. You're sharing your pain for people and going, you're not alone. You aren't the only one who has experienced this. You aren't the only one who needs a voice for this, you know? And that to me was the greatest part about the masks. And that's one of the reasons why my mask has always changed is because with every, I'm never the same person. I, with every album, my voice is going to change. The things that I'm going to talk about are going to change. And I can't use the face from 20 years ago to represent that. It has to be who I am in that moment, who I am in this band in that moment. And that band, that person is always going to have a different face. You, you know, talking about that, I'm just thinking now, I, I don't know why this came to me, but it, when we put on, before we go out on an operation, we put our night vision on, we put our gear on, our balaclava comes up to here. You can, all, I, I'll be honest, it, it, it chant, you said chant, it, that's, you feel, look at me, I'm 5'9", 160 pounds. When right. I get all that gear on, I'll be honest, I look like a monster. And I feel like a monster. As soon as those night vision comes down and that sings, even when I was wearing shorts during one of my combat operate, I was wearing shorts when it didn't matter. Still, I, sorry, it was hot out there. I, short, <laughs> long pants ain't going to save me. But it, maybe that's, and I think maybe that's why it resonated so much with the military. It's because of that mass. And maybe we just, I'm just realizing it now, 20 some years later. <laughs> Because it was when we put on that stuff, it, it channeled what we needed to do, whether it yeah. was brutal, but most times it was. Uh, um, but I, I don't know. I, I there was more of not less of a question, but more of a statement in me of just going, huh, I, what you just maybe maybe that's why. Maybe that's why and the music was okay, fantastic. But gosh, just the relationship that a lot of us in the first responders of the military have with with Slipknot, maybe that's part of it. And, and I, it means a lot. I think a lot of it too is that honesty recognizes honesty. Yeah. You know, the thing that I've noted, the thing that I always had a problem with, with a lot, not all, but a lot of heavy bands when I was first coming up, is that it all, it never felt genuine to me. Like the things that they were talking about or the things that they were trying to convey, it didn't feel like they believed it or they had lived it or they meant it, you know? And when we, when we started, man, I mean, every bit of venom was a place that we, we lived in, you know, we lived it, you know, and we dealt with it. So I think that's maybe an, another, you know, reason why so many people, our, our music resonated with them as much as it did is because they were, they were like, they were like, Oh, they've been there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. We get, they, they've, they felt it. And that, that to me is the greatest sign of respect. You know, when, when people come up to you from all walks of life, whether military or medical or, yeah. you know, school teachers for Christ's sakes, they come up and they go, I appreciate your music because it speaks to a place that you've obviously been to. And that, I mean, there's no greater compliment in the world, man. And it may, and that makes me want to keep going. That's, yeah. you know, that's really it. You know, that a handful of other things, man, that's, that's what it's all about. And that gives you that passion. Passion, man, it does, and it still makes me passionate. Uh, I, I, I listen to Wait and Bleed or People Equal Shit. <laughs> it still makes me want to go kick a door in. I don't, I can't do it anymore because my knees are gone, so I can't do it. I'm 52, but it still makes me want to. I just physically know, like I said, limitations. I just physically know can't do that shit anymore. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a spring chicken. Um, you know, going and I had really one last question. I, I could probably ask a, a more off of what we're going to talk about or Ian has, but. Okay. My thing is teamwork and you guys have been together forever. I've been on teams. We all didn't like each other. We, we, right. but we got the mission done and we've been on teams long where guys just eventually even liked each other and then didn't as the years went on, we were always be able to, especially in the special operations community, which I served in, we we're always able to put that shit aside. 
it was it was basically weaned out of it was beaten out of literally it was literally a figure it was beaten out of us you guys may not lecture but you got to get along because the mission is success it, how did you guys do because you see so many bad for this many years and you've had i know you we're i'm midwestern we don't get along i get i hate man we hate each other something's like dude right. fuck you i don't want to talk to you get the fuck out of my face right but, well but especially, how- especially the older you get yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> or like the more like set in your ways and you're just like ah you bunch of <laughs> how, how did well, I, I quit it to being the clint eastwood that's who i am now tell my 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 wife i am clint eastwood on my front porch with my lunch with my rocking chair telling all the little whippersnappers to get off my fucking right. that's how kind of guy i am now <laughs> how did how do you guys how did you maintain and how do you continue to maintain that teamwork and still whether you get along or tolerate or whatnot, you don't need to get in the specifics, but there's got to be a secret there. Just like the military has their secrets in some of the units of how you maintain and get along. I, maybe some words of wisdom for bands that are just starting out and, and guys are just going into the military. And, and uh, how do you maintain that longevity just personality wise, especially when you get successful, especially when you start to get more money, especially when just you're, you're, yourself when you're, you're just a strong alpha male or whatever they call it now i don't i don't i don't get into all that what, stuff but yeah. whatever it's called but, person in a leadership position how about that <laughs> there you go thank you Ooh, and every- no no um <laughs> i uh i you know i i honestly i think about it a lot because i mean there are definitely times where you know we don't get along but there are definitely times where we would lay, lay down our lives for you know and I, but i think that just comes down to human nature you know i mean that's just no one is always going to get along you know there are going to be times where something is going to get said and someone's going to rub somebody the wrong way as long as you know that knowing it yeah. and and you're aware of how to fix it and aware that 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 feeling is temporary it's not permanent you know and let i mean it has to be a real fuck you kind of moment for that stuff to kind of go to hell you know so for us we've always allowed ourselves to get away from each other you know that's one of the reasons why i do so many different projects man you know and i think that's allowed us to kind of reconnect over the years we've you know, some of us didn't necessarily start out as friends, uh, but we have come to love each other as brothers over the years. And obviously we've, we have experienced the highest of highs, the lowest of lows. And when we have felt a disconnect, instead of breaking us up, it has 100% made us stronger, which if you'd have told me that 20 years ago, I'd have fucking laughed. Like if nobody, just because I know how gnarly this camp is, you know, like, um, but at the same time, man, you know, when I had my spinal surgery, the first person who called me was Sid, you know, when, when things, when, you know, when things went down in our lives, the first people to reach out were people in Slipknot. And I've never forgotten that, man. You know, even as as bad as I can be, and I am just as guilty as anybody, man, of disconnecting, of taking things the wrong way, of, you know, just being an asshole. You know, those guys have always let me know at the right moment that they care and that, you know, I may not have talked this time, but if I need to talk next time, they're there, you know? And sometimes just knowing that can repair so many bridges and heal so much, dude, you know? I'm not always the best friend, I'm all I'm not always the best band member, bandmate. I'm not always the best leader. But sometimes the best leaders know that, you know, and and 
the part of being the best leader means realizing you don't always have the best idea and you delegate and you, you know, you distribute, you know, the teams that win are the ones that know to put the ball in the strongest person's hands to make sure that person in that moment gets the job done. And that to me, that means knowing that sometimes I don't have to worry about having all the answers. I can let my team help me. And as long as I'm there to make sure that it all goes right, then that's what it's all about, you know? And maybe that's the secret, man. You know, we all trust each other when it comes to what we do in the band, you know? And they all, they all trust me when it comes to what I do on stage, you know? And which is why when we do shows, I can run it like that. And they trust me to keep that show going, you know? That's awesome. Right. You know, that's awesome. Awesome. Well said. It, it, it's I, uh, humility and confidence. And you, you've, I think that's the key right there. Humility and confidence to let other people take the ball and run with it. And that's, that's special operations community. That's why each one of us has different skill sets and you have to have let somebody who has that skill set for that moment, take it. It, it. Honestly, yeah. You sound like your band is, run, it sounds like Slipknot is running like a special operations team, man. So tell the guys that you say, you guys sound like you're running it just like it's so called. <laughs> Yeah, man. You know, they'll, they'll be like, well, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I want to be respectful of your time here, but I want to make sure we get to really the big thing that you're promoting, which is CMF two and the oh. tour that's coming up. I mean, to see you back at the club level doing these shows, I know people are psyched for this album and I should also note it's on a new label, which is Decibel Cooper, uh, BMG, no longer on Roadrunner. And you've been pretty vocal. I've seen, I, I watch your interviews saying like, you don't feel like the first album got the promotional push that it should have. And that's why you want to see this succeed. You're coming on podcasts like ours and you know, we're excited for it and want to hear about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, you know, I mean, label aside, you know, I mean, I can't say enough great things about BMG, man. Like they, I, a lot of people don't even realize this, man, but I, I self-funded CMF too. Wow. I didn't even have a, you know, I had no label technically, um and i you know i i just basically i believed in it so much that i was like i'm going into the studio to do this you know and we'll 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 figure out the label side later but this is what i want to do and as we were in the studio that's when bmg kind of came in and was like you know we would love we were we are gagging to do this with you Hmm. and uh i came i went i went to their offices i played them three songs rough mixes from from the album and they freaked out so hard that they were like okay when when do we get to hear the whole thing when do we get to come to the studio and meet everybody? i mean they were so gung-ho about it that i was like okay they they get it and they're ready um yeah i mean cmft was was a great to me a great starter album it was obviously it was a, a compilation of the songs that i had written over the years um that i really never had a place for so i wanted to make sure that you know if i never get another chance to release these songs i can do it now and get it out there and just see what happens you know and the confidence that came from that was i was able to go okay cmft was where i was cmf2 is where we're going so cmf2 to me is three times better the songs are three times better. The production is three times better. It's darker. It's it's heavier. Um, but it also has all of the elements from the you know from the first album that people loved. You know, I mean, there are great acoustic moments. Uh, there's a great, really great fucking piano song on there that I wrote for my wife. Actually, um, we just musically just swallowed the first album whole. I mean, this one is just so big and expansive. And I mean, anyone who's heard beyond can attest to that is the fact that we just took it and just took it, no pun intended, beyond the realms of what we'd even started on the first album, man. So um, I'm really stoked for people to hear it. Uh, To me, it's one of the best things that I've ever done. And I couldn't have done it with a better band, man. Like, I'm really, really excited for people to, to really experience this new album. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And I said, I've been following, listening to you guys 
a long time. You got me through a lot of hard times uh, uh, over overseas and and at home. You know, come and now that I listen to it, it, it make I said it makes me smile because those hard times that I got through listening to music, I'll hear the song, right. And like it's a, so it's it's become post traumatic stress to one of our buddies called I haven't coined this phrase but now it's post traumatic growth because I'll listen to the song now and be like wow that's I mean, a, remember what I, I was that doing what was going on that day and smile at it so tell the band please you guys are talented oh, and the reason you're successful I know you work hard Midwest I love the Midwest Midwesterns are I love Midwesterns that's me as well but you guys are talented and that helps a lot too being talented. And you work hard to be talented. That's what a lot of, I think, young, the younger generation, you young fucking whippersnappers, you can't just go on social media and be successful. No, you got to work your ass off and no. you got to be, to be, and you guys epitomize that. So brother, I can't say thank you enough. Just having you on here. I'm still thinking back to 2004 where I was at in Iraq, just talking to you. I, I, I continually was having just flashbacks. To where I was at and I, it, and it was good it, it brought a smile to my face so just if anything you've helped out me get through a, a great get, get through a day just and it, I, I really appreciate that so keep on supporting veterans that you touch it, it remains a lot if you ever need anything from me personally on the veteran side of the house or just somebody to vouch for you if there's some dickhead out there damn seals I'm kidding I love my Navy seals I love but you just you just let me know and and uh, I do whatever I need to to help you out. I'm sure you don't need any help from me, but I'm I'll be there for you if you need anything. No, man, I I appreciate that more than you know, and and likewise, you know, if I can help you. you guys, way. In fact, let's um, if you wouldn't mind, I want to put the 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 website up. Yes, um, yeah, for uh for the foundation. Uh, anybody who's looking for uh information on how to get help uh for uh. Uh, PTSD, uh, whether it's, I mean, we, we try to help anybody, but we specialize in uh, ex and current military, um, uh, law enforcement, uh, emergency services, and their families. Go to www.wertf.com or excuse me, dot org. Um, yeah. That www.wertf.org. Um, and not only will you find uh, information on how to contact us, but we actually have a state by state, state and country now system um, to find places in or near you um, to find organizations that can help you with that and uh, we'll continue that mission as long as we can. Yeah, and, and, and guys, if, if you search even just I just searched Corey Taylor Foundation and it was the second thing that popped up. And I, I, oh, so I, I can even find, you can even just find it there if you can't remember the website. So yeah. Yeah. And it, it's very well put up to that website's very well done, which, Hey man, this, that, that first, at first impressions, it, it is, it was excellent. So thank you, right. brother. And thank you for coming on. I know Ian's got something and, uh, but I just can't say thank you enough. It was an honor to talk to you today, brother. It was my pleasure, man. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all I was going to say is also at the Taylor Foundation on Instagram. I mean, that's really how I got in touch and was able to make this happen. Um, at Corey Taylor on Instagram, at Corey Taylor Rock on Twitter, CoreyTaylor.com. And then, of course, CMF2 is coming up September 15th. You can see all the right. tour dates there. You guys are yeah. playing like Huntington by me. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I'll be out there. I'm excited for that. And yeah, I don't, I don't have the military background to Chris. I just get to hang with a lot of military guys. But I will say, and maybe Harold will put this up on the screen if I could find it. I'm pretty sure... There's a picture on my mom's desk who lives in the town next to me, so I can grab it, of uh, me holding my dog at the time, wearing a Slipknot shirt, and it's probably 1999, so I'm like 13, 14 years old. <laughs> so, like, to me, I, I geek out over doing this. I mean, I I don't – podcasts weren't a thing when I was that age. Right. If, right. if, if I could have done what – like, this is probably what I would have aspired to do is right. get to interview people like yourself. I just never wanted to have – a regular job and and i was always that kid reading the liner notes and seeing who wrote what song and the fact that i get to discuss all this with the people it it means a lot so thank you so much Corey. appreciate it man my pleasure again man we'll do this again i promise well yeah, i'm in i'm in That's vegas it. every now and again because our friend dylan who does um ads and stuff for us uh is out of vegas so i don't know it'd be cool to do in person at some point i'll, I'll definitely yeah. be in touch you can make this yeah we, i love 100 we'll see what we can do Hey, don't That'd stretch yourself too thin, man. Get some rest. You're getting to be 50. You're going to be on the wrong side of 50. Here's... I know. 
<laughs> I know. I'm taking all the vitamin E I can. Trust me. <laughs> all right, brother. God bless you, man. All right. All right. You too, man. You guys take Thanks, Corey. Take Appreciate care, it, Corey. Man. All right. Bye, guys. That's all for this episode of Battleline Podcast. But we're always posting new content on social media. Follow us on Instagram at Battleline Podcast and on Twitter at Battleline Pod. That's an order. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes up every Tuesday. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice. Believe in yourself. Face all challenges head on. And as always, never quit.